Welcome back to Streaming Media West 2018. I'm Tim Siglin, contributing editor with Streaming Media Magazine and the founding executive director of the not-for-profit Help Me Stream. Today I've got a guest from MediaKind. Um, introduce yourself and then tell us what MediaKind is because I think people will know the components but they don't know the name. Sure, and uh, uh, no doubt that that's, that, that that's true. So, um, hi, I'm Mark Russell. Uh, I am the uh, CTO of, uh, of MediaKind, okay. and uh, MediaKind is today still part of Ericsson, so okay. we are um, the media technology division of Ericsson. Now we're in the process of spinning uh, those, uh, uh, those businesses out into an independent company that will, we've launched our brand this summer, uh, will be uh, you know, fully kind of carved out by the, uh, by the end of the year and will okay. be, uh, be an independent company. So we have um, compression, mm -hmm. um, you know, d uh, media delivery, cloud DVR, uh, and then what we call the media platform or the TV platform. So okay. this would be media first, media room. Uh, so area. It, yeah, and remind me, it would be in Vivio, Timber, some of the sure. other. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, compression is, um, you know, really on the on the hardware side, more uh, of our Tanberg mm -hmm. uh, heritage. Uh, we uh, acquired uh, Invivio uh, 2015, I right, believe. Right, right. Uh, so that was that's really uh, the start of software compression and and really uh, kind of the foundation of our microservices architecture in that layer okay. of the of the portfolio. And we bought Fabrics mm -hmm. uh, for both the cloud DVR uh, platform uh, and uh, it is a very nice layer for. Uh, at sort of an application platform, if you like, for live and bot origins and okay. uh, you know, sort of next generation sure. adaptive bitrate delivery. So, what's the what's sort of the end goal with MediaKind? Obviously, spinning out of Ericsson allows you to focus just on the media portions. But yeah, yeah, no. Uh, so, so the 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 goal here really is to build a uh, you know one of the largest players in the media technology space that's really focused mm -hmm. on, uh, on on media technology exclusively so this mm -hmm. does give us a chance to, uh, uh, to, to to do that which we're very excited about mm -hmm. by the way sure. it's, a very, sure, sure. it's a very very exciting proposition to be to, to be part of and I think if I, if, we, if I were to think about our end goal I mean it's the reason that I'm here it's a, like I, I'd have to say you know we we come from a heritage of pretty classic broadcast mm -hmm. and pay TV. Sure. Um, really uh, have a lot of experience uh, in, 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 in that mold, but my goodness, you look around and uh, you know, pay TV is becoming streaming TV and streaming right. TV is right. you know, going everywhere sure. and you know, broadcasters are going direct to consumer um, and, and we're at streaming media now. Yeah, and, and the confusion <laughs> of IPTV versus OTT uh, exactly. continues to be even more, more confusing. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, so would the intent be to create essentially white label systems that uh, that media companies could then <clears throat> use for their own delivery? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so if we if we think about how we um, sell and engage the marketplace today, we we make products that are really you know sort of uh, set for a purpose, very mm -hmm. classic way that you build in the service provider or broadcast space, right? And ship and support it and do all of those uh, all all of those necessary and great things. Sure. Um, as we look to the future. Um, you know, we really see a future where um, the portfolio is architected in a way that can be all offered as mm. a service. Okay. <clears throat> now, having said that, um, <clears throat> uh, there will be many uh, potential, uh, many customers who will want to operate in different modes, so they can, mm. we'll, we'll all, we're quite committed to continuing to sell components okay. and to engage the market the way it wants to be engaged. So some possible hybrid approaches. Exactly, I mean, okay. I, I think in, in we're a vendor, we're not a service right. provider. Sure, that makes so, sense. Uh, so we, we are committed to both helping our customers get mm -hmm. to the future, but also help them with their current, mm. you know, their their current investments. Sure. I'm not going to call them legacy. Right. No, no, understood. <laughs> as, current as, investments. As one of the Honored previous guests said, you know, less um, less 
vertically yeah. integrated that, or that's, that's yeah, right yeah, yeah. but but it's you know there's a mountain of that stuff yeah, absolutely and um, and uh, you know we contributed to that mountain right. sure um, but but there'll, there'll be a transition mm -hmm. and I think a, a company uh, in our po position very well positioned to uh, architect for the future mm -hmm. and then help bridge right. to get to get there and, and not only do you have the back background and heritage of broadcast, but with Ericsson itself, the background and heritage of telco. <clears throat> Absolutely. In, in dealing with microservices yes. before they were even called microservices. It, it, exactly, exactly right. So so just a quick question for you. Microservices is a really hot topic. Sure. What, what Did two panels mean? on it today. Yeah, of so. course. And, <laughs> and um, so the last guest I had, I asked what he sort of a, uh, saw microservices as. Can you give me just a brief description of where you all sort of consider microservices? Sure. Because there are, there are companies who will say, I'll take my monolith, shove it in a Kubernetes container and call it a microservice. And yeah. that's not really. So that, that's right. I think they find, well, you know, that may be the start of a journey, but it won't be the end. <laughs> right, right, uh, okay. So, so we see microservices as a um, kind of an ecosystem Okay. That you're adopting a new way of engineering your products. Sure. You're adopting a new, a, a different way of operating them. Mm -hmm. You're adopting a different way of uh, maintaining them over right. over time. And so you, you don't want to take microservices outside the context of right. that. Of good that point. Echo, that, Very that good echo. point. So it's continuous delivery, continuous evolution. You know, it's that that is a, a very important uh, you know aspect to this, and if you start from that perspective, mm -hmm. you'd very quickly realize that well, okay, uh, microservice very simply put, it's a container of value. Right. Um, you want to have that do you know really as few things as possible. That's to have value, mm -hmm. but as few things right. as possible. Right. And hence the micro part. That, that, <laughs> hence the micro part. So there's no real set definition of right. what that is. Um, but really the value that everybody gets in terms of flexibility and scalability and all of this, this sort of stuff comes from adopting you know, all of the surrounding parts of the ecosystem, okay. all of the things that make an, a, a, a microservices a component live and breathe. Mm. And I, I think ecosystem's a great metaphor because yeah. ultimately yeah. each of those pieces is reliant on the others that's right. to create a much larger yes, service. Yes, that's right, awesome. exactly. exactly. Mark, thank you very much for your time. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, Mark Russell with MediaKind, and we'll be back shortly. Yeah.